Hey everyone, Reed Hendricks, Valor Ridge. Party at the Moon Tower, full kegs. Guys, it never ceases to amaze me that people that have zero knowledge, zero working knowledge, zero factual knowledge, just spout off at the mouth about things they, they just can't even comprehend. And our latest example is an actor turned political activist, Matthew McConaughey. I'm not going to sit here and dog the man's acting career. I've uh, enjoyed some of his movies over the years, and especially the one I quoted at the beginning. Those of you like Dazed and Confused, uh, you'll appreciate that. Unfortunately, Mr. McConaughey is both dazed and confused about the issue of firearms in this country. So, now before we even start all this stuff, please understand the man is an actor. He is paid to play a persona or character in order to convince people that it is actually happening and real. All he's done is taking his film skills and transported that over into a political topic. And right now we're talking about gun control. Now he comes off as a reasonable guy who's concerned about the kids and don't they all? Don't, don't they all come off like that? Unfortunately it doesn't hold water because here he is from four years ago on this exact same topic showing exactly what he really wanted. They've got three hallmarks here. One, let's ban the assault weapons for civilians. And to my friends out there that are responsible, owners of these recreational, uh, or these assault weapons that they use for recreation, please, man, and let us take one for the team here and set it down. Number two, let's restrict the capacity on the magazines. I mean, look here. In the state of Texas, we have a three-shell limit to hunt migratory birds. Do the math. You get my point. The third one, let's better regulate the background checks that are already in place and close the loopholes that exist in those background checks. Now, those are the three main stipulations. Now notice, just four years ago, the three things that he discussed were outright banning all semi-automatic rifles, banning all magazines, high capacity, they're not high capacity, they're standard capacity. That's what those rifles are issued with. That's what those rifles come from the factory with. So that's another thing he wanted. And of course, the third thing he wanted was better background checks. What does that mean, better background checks, the loopholes? Guys, those things don't exist. And to the uninformed person, that sounds reasonable. I was talking with a nice lady just the other day who says, oh, we really should have those background checks. I was like, have you ever bought a firearm? Do you even know the process that goes along with that? Of course not. So to the uninformed, to the emotional, it makes sense but unfortunately there's huge holes in his theory. Now of course you'll notice that from four years ago at the March for Our Lives all those uh, uninformed emotional people but now let's fast forward to his most recent jaunt as a uh, spokesman for the White House all of a sudden. I guess if you're an actor that qualifies you to speak for the White House and although to most of us that would be an upgrade over the standard fare that we get every day but here is his latest position. We need background checks. We need to raise the minimum age to purchase an AR-15 rifle to 21. We need a waiting period for those rifles. We need red flag laws and consequences for those who abuse them. These are reasonable, practical, tactical regulations to our nation, states, communities, schools, and homes. Notice none of the criteria from four years ago is present and he appeals to the moderate. He wants to be a bridge builder. He wants to be a consensus builder. He wants to be a uniting man of reason and, and as a native Texan that qualifies him to talk about firearms. Uh, I love Texas. I like a lot of people in Texas. I've got a lot of friends down there. But unfortunately, just being from somewhere doesn't qualify you to speak about a topic. And being from the hometown where a tragedy takes place doesn't make you qualified to speak about it. So he's back to the better background checks, whatever that means. But unfortunately, what he fails to realize in the case of Uvalde was that the man was investigated by police. They dropped the ball on that. He was investigated for mental instability. They still let him go. So that background check wouldn't do anything about that. So the three things he wants now are, once again, more background checks, raising the age to purchase the firearms, and then, of course, a cooling down period, whatever that means, cooling down. So we got problems. We have inherent problems with what he's proposing right now. He talks about it doesn't infringe on anyone's right. I think you got to look up what the definition of infringe means. Passing any more laws 
that restricts people with firearms ownership is an infringement. That is exactly what that word means. And unfortunately, right now today, there's a couple of offensive things with Mr. McConaughey's position. Uh, I take personal offense to raising the age of purchasing a semi-automatic rifle for the following reasons. That at 17 years of age, I was defending this country with a rifle. At 17 years of age. And I think that's a huge insult also to the vast majority of people in the United States Armed Forces right now who are under the age of 21. That's right. The bulk of our military is under the age of 21. Whether people want to acknowledge that or not, that is the overwhelming majority of people serving in uniform today is under the age of 21. So they have no problem Problem protecting the country with people under that age and he wants to raise he wants to further restrict a constitutionally recognized right raise that age and you and you as a as a citizen of this country he wants to restrict the one second amendment now, I don't know about you guys, but I have a special amount of contempt for someone who's never worn a uniform uh, who didn't have the guts who didn't even have the courage to go into uniform try to pontificate to the rest of the people that have and even if you haven't that you don't that you should be older than what it states right now to purchase a firearm. And by the way, all these have already been deemed to be illegal by the most liberal court in the country. The Ninth Circuit out in California has struck down age restrictions on firearms. And if that doesn't tell you something, if it's already, the courts have already struck this down, why do they keep pushing for this? So if Mr. McConaughey wants real people like me and probably most of you watching this video who do own these firearms. And by the way, we don't own these firearms for recreation. I own my firearms to protect myself and my family and my nation, by the way. Uh, protect the nation against the lawlessness that's taken place so many times the last several years where cities have been burned to the ground, where left, leftist radical communist thugs have burned down people's property and threatened their physical lives. And, and I think Kyle Rittenhouse would have a different opinion on, on whether or not somebody under the age of 20 one should be allowed to use a firearm for self-defense because he defended himself against a child rapist in Kenosha, Wisconsin against that and was fully acquitted in it by a jury of his peers. So I think that there's a lot of disingenuous information being put out there by an actor whose main job is he gets paid to create an emotional character that appeals to the simple-minded individuals out there. But I think the biggest issue with this bill besides all of them, they're all equally horrifying and all of them infringe on the Second Amendment. So we can't accept that in any capacity. But the biggest issue that I have is the red flag laws in addition to all the other stuff and here's why. We, we come to a point in our country where anyone who disagrees with the Democrats. Anyone who disagrees with the radical left is all of, of a sudden an extremist. Anybody who stands up for liberty, anybody that stands up for everybody's individual rights is all of, all of a sudden an extremist. And so under this new red flag laws, which are extremely vague, which are extremely political, which are extremely partisan, all of a sudden you're a threat. And all it takes is a call to law enforcement who will come investigate you and take your firearms and then you don't have due process, which is guaranteed under the Constitution, by the way to get your stuff back, to get your property back, let alone the violation of your Second Amendment rights to protect your family in that current moment. So I think that we've got to stop all the way, dig those feet in, and absolutely refuse to understand that any of his points have validity in any concept whatsoever. There is no validity to the points he's making. This is entirely emotional. This is entirely designed to sway public opinion and to grab people in the middle who may be unsure. Folks, if you find yourself in that position, and I know most of you watching this video are probably not in the middle of the road. You're probably a Second Amendment activist like I am. You're probably an American who cares about this country's heritage. You're probably an American who cares about individual liberty. And if you're not, if you're a middle of the road person, please understand that this man's entire job is to get paid to invoke emotions out of people watching him. That's what he did. Why would an actor go to the White House? Why wouldn't they have a Second Amendment activist in the White House speaking for people. Why wouldn't they have somebody who's informed on these issues speaking from the White House podium? I will tell you, because they know that our case is much stronger than theirs and they have no case whatsoever. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. As long as you keep that in your crosshairs, as long as you keep that as your compass heading, as long as you keep that as your focus, they have no water. Their arguments hold zero water whatsoever. And I don't care how emotional it is. No, we're not going to use more government to create a solution that government caused the problem in the first place by not 
hardening schools with, with school resource officers or guardians, armed teachers that are were ready and willing to defend their school and their students, that have police that refuse to get in the fight, that refuse to do it. We've seen it at Parkland and we've seen it at Uvalde. They, they, they were cowardly. They waited almost an hour to do anything about it. They refused to go in and confront that little dirt bag. And so this has happened again and again, and it happens all the time. And the places where these shootings happen are people where people are disarmed, the, they don't have a school resource officer, and if they do have one, then they're unable and unwilling to get in the fight. And I'll tell you something, uh, coming from a law enforcement background, I can tell you that the school resource officers are usually not the best officers on the road. They're usually people that are almost retired or that they just don't have the aggression necessary to go confront violent criminals. And I think that rather than having the, the people just put them out there to pasture, what you need to have, you want a school resource officer, have a combat vet in there. Have a police officer with some shootings under their belt. You know, have teachers in there that are veterans that have actually been there and gotten trigger time against bad guys. You want to do something like that? You want to get serious about protecting kids? How about stop stripping people of their Second Amendment rights just because they go to work? You know, I can't think of anything more evil uh, than what you're seeing out there right now. And guys, I'm here to tell you something. Uh, the Second Amendment is up to us to keep and preserve. The Second Amendment is up for people just like you, just like me, to preserve it. I don't need some multi-millionaire actor with armed security pontificating to me and you what needs to happen when it comes to one's own firearms ownership. If you found the information video helpful, subscribe to the channel, follow me on social media, link is down below. And if you want to learn how to protect yourself and your family, come on out to Valor Ridge and we can help you. This is Reed Hendricks of Valor Ridge reminding you, lessons that we learn are written on the tombstones of others. We'll see you on the Ridge.